Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Aristocrat Soccer Podcast. For those of you who watched Dashing Roommates Part 1 with Haley Hansen, we now have a Part 2 for you. But first, let me welcome Dave Harris, my co-host. How are you doing, Dave? Jake, I'm doing awesome. How are you? I'm doing great. Excited to do this Part 2. Um, Veronica, first question for you. How much do you miss Haley? so much she left approximately 36 hours and 12 minutes ago and i begged her to stay longer because she drove to kansas city and she was like no no no, i'm leaving thursday morning and we went ice skating wednesday night and we got back kind of late and i was like i think you should wait till friday you seem stressed you you don't want to drive tired i don't think it's worth it I was like, I'm going to break the coffee machines in the morning and then you're not going to be able to go because you're not going to have your morning cup of coffee and you can't drive if you don't have coffee. Like, please. How, how stressed did she seem? Like, what was it that made her seem stressed? Oh, no part of her seemed stressed. She was just like, oh, I have to pack still and I have to pack up. She was packing up her car at like 10 p.m. so that she could get out at 6 a.m. I was like, there's no need to be worrying about packing your car at 10 p.m. Just waiting on the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was so angry. She was like, enough. And I was like playing the songs that were like the breakup songs. Stay <laughs> by Rihanna. I was like, just stay one more day. It's fine. Like, you know. so, <laughs> what are the things about that episode? you know, that including yourself in that episode. And um, it's just, it's so nice for, I think anybody who follows the club, follows the team, watches you guys to get to see the other side, like outside of the soccer field. And then you guys are a lot of fun. Like, you know, we really enjoyed, um, you know, getting to know Haley. We're looking forward to, you know, focusing on you, getting to know you now. Uh, but the dynamic is just, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm hoping that like fans will kind of, you know, get into that a little bit more, you know, because, you know, any time, you know, you follow a club, you follow, you know, players and, you know, you get to see like, you know, the reality shows are so many of them now out that are so popular. Like, I mean, you guys definitely have your own reality show in the works there, yeah. you know. I um, think there's a lot of potential there for sure. We talked about it with our bubble in July. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think without a doubt there's definitely we touched on something in women's soccer that you know i don't know if uh, everybody knew about but uh the, the two of you are quite an interesting combo without a doubt so oh good i'm glad we're up there with some awesome entertainment on and off <laughs> <laughs> i hope our on the field just provides as much entertainment i know our off the field sets a pretty high bar <laughs> <laughs> something well, I, that we got I, 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 I hope i hope you guys are watching the YouTube version uh, because Jake is becoming quite the video editor <laughs> and he's like putting content in from you know, like you really have to watch like I was just talking about it, my wife on the way here like you really have to watch these episodes now with on YouTube like the podcast <laughs> is like already outdated because like the footage you guys celebrating the win you know <laughs> this year, interspersed into the podcast you know the goal that you scored, I believe it was, you yeah. know, in Australia. He uh, was walking past. I saw the video you guys posted. And I just <laughs> her bun, like doing her like angry walk that she does, very forceful <laughs> steps, and she's like, oh "That was the best part about that video was that you we got you scoring, and then we got her angry." And I think I think <laughs> yeah. we're definitely gonna post that same video again on on this on this episode just to kind of make her even more angry. Um, I but it's, it. it's something that maybe Dave, we need to copyright dashing roommates. Um, so the, the Houston dash can use that next year as their own YouTube <laughs> series. Uh, I think that, oh. I mean, that, that's how, or we can just give them the copyright. We can just yeah. let them have it. Yeah. We can just let them have it. <laughs> we, we, you know, we, we, we come oh, pretty cheaply, I... so, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's your picture, by the way, mm -hmm. Jake? Oh, uh, this is, you? I'm... Uh, for the YouTube viewers, so we're, we're, we're really letting down the Apple Cop podcast because they got no idea what's going on. But nope. yeah. um, so I'm actually in um, uh, Aguas Caliente, Peru. Um, it's oh. I've actually I've actually been here. Um, I took this picture. Uh, Ooh, it's, it's, oh, it's a soccer there. field. <laughs> I have. It's 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 um, <laughs> it's a soccer field in the mountains, in the clouds, basically. And it's a, Aguas Calientes is a little town that you visit, you have to visit before you go to Machu Picchu. 
Oh. Uh, so you go from Cusco to Aguas Calientes, and then Aguas Calientes is just, is just like an hour bus ride straight up a mountain to Machu Picchu. And in this little town, there are some residents, and there's a soccer field. So like one half of the it's a town is like residents, and the other half is all tourists and hotels and stuff. Uh, so this soccer field is where all, all the locals play. Uh, but I had to go visit it. I actually saw it on Instagram before I went. And I was like, I got to go there. We got to find this place. So hey, did you bring Caroline there with you? Yes, Caroline. Caroline was there. She. Oh, uh, okay. Because I was going to say, if you didn't, then you could bring Caroline and Veronica and Haley could join you. And you guys could do like a group trip. It'd be a lot of fun. You know? A <laughs> group <laughs> trip. Yeah. Wow, Veronica. I guess you're go. coming along. <laughs> oh my God, I can't wait to go to Peru. Let us know this. We get the boyfriends in. You can do like a couple's yeah. trip. And, uh, a know. couple's retreat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah, we could. Three this field would. Yeah, this field is. It was. There was very. There was only a couple people playing on it. We can get some training in on this field as well if, uh, if we really oh. need. For sure. Yeah, I mean, maybe <laughs> three. I don't know if Haley and I's boyfriends are very good at the whole soccer part, but like it'd be funny to watch. Uh, I, mean, <laughs> I, my, I mean, my girlfriend played in college, so you guys would okay. probably we probably have a leg up. You'd probably have a leg up on us, but we'll sure. um, we'll uh, we'll give it a go. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, focusing now on Veronica, I feel like we uh, we focused we need a lot to on, focus you in, on Veronica. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we focused a lot on you in the the Haley episode. Uh, we made you look very good. But thanks. Going to your 2020 season, which was a whirlwind. Mm-hmm. It was crazy for everyone, but for you, it was especially because you were in Sydney, uh, in the in in Australia. You played. You won a semifinal against Haley, which we had discussed on Haley's episode, and then you play in a final right as COVID's kind of heating up as things are locking down. And then you go back to Houston after that season and you have a great season. You win the, 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 the challenge cup and then you make the fun or you uh, finish as the second place team in the fall series. So you had quite the 2020 a few goals along the way that the YouTube viewers I'm sure we'll see right around this point. Um, if my editing skills are on, <laughs> are, are doing well, but, but just tell us how, how was 2020 for you and how did you think you progressed as a player? I mean, 2020 for me was definitely, there were challenging times, obviously. I was coming back from my ACL. It was my first couple games, so it was a lot of getting the rust out. But honestly, even, it sounds bad with COVID and how crazy everything's been. I will say 2020 is definitely significantly better than 2019 because I got to actually play soccer. Um So, yeah, I think that 2020 did present a lot of challenges, especially in the beginning, getting all the rust off, trying to figure out how to play soccer like a an actual professional again and playing in Sydney helped a lot. And then when you come to the NWSL, it's obviously a step higher. So the first couple games in the Challenge Cup were challenging and mentally it was horrible. You've heard all the horror bubble stories. So that in itself was a pretty big difficult thing to get through but I did and I had a lot of help from my teammates and from Haley obviously there were a lot of tears that were shed that she you know didn't cause but she was definitely around for um and she helped a lot just getting through that period of time and helping me get my confidence back up as a player and by the fall series I felt like I was back to myself pre-ACL um, in 2019. So I felt like I ended on a pretty good high note. Yeah, you definitely did. You, your fall series, you scored what three goals, I believe. And you definitely seem to be rounding into form, uh, as the season progressed, as that happens with all injuries. Uh, it just takes time. Even when you're back playing, people don't always realize that the first months, especially with serious injury are tough and you don't feel like yourself, uh, but it's good to see you kind of back uh, and firing again and hopefully 2021 will be even better. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Can you maybe touch a little bit on, um, it just seems like you come to Houston and you really found a home, like a real, you know, like your club, you know, it, it, it just seems like you really synced in there and done really well. And, and um, you know, it seems like it's a, it, it already seemed like it was a really good club and, you know, the affiliation, I guess, with the, with the connection with the Dynamo and the facilities and everything. And it just seems like it's a now on the field, the product, it just seems like it's moving forward in the direction everybody was hoping it would. And maybe just touch on, you know, 
Houston Dino, uh, Dash, like what that team means to you. And, you know, uh, you know, it just seems like you could easily be like the type of player that's like you're a career player with, with the Dash. You know, I mean, things change a lot in women's soccer, it seems like too, well, in general in soccer, but I could easily see you being a stalwart there for many, many years to come. Yeah, I mean, that would be ideal. I would love to be in Houston and to help grow this team more. It was nice to be, not that I was part of the inaugural team, but I do feel like I've been around long enough and I've seen a lot of changes happen. And as of Haley and several of the other more veteran players on the team. And it it's amazing to see how the team has progressed in on the field and off the field. I think that there's just been an overhaul with culture. I think there's been an overhaul with professionalism. We've been treated so much better over these last few years. And you can see the change and how it impacts us on the field. Because if you're happy with your life off the field, it puts you in the best position to perform well. And I think that has shown consistently, not just in soccer, but really in life in general. Um, But yeah, so I would love to keep helping this team in any way, shape or form that I can. I, I love that we were an underdog and that people still see us as as an underdog. I think that it's very easy to underestimate people. And I've, personally feel like I've been underestimated a lot in my life in regards to soccer and I feel very at home with the dash and I I like having that little chip on my shoulder being like okay well we'll just keep proving ourselves and we're okay with that because we're just going to keep grinding and that's kind of the mentality that everybody has on the team and it's nice to look around and be like okay yeah like we have a crew here that's going to put in the work every single day and we're not afraid to step up to the plate and play whoever wants to play us. I'd like to go back. I'd like to go further with Houston um, with the city and everything, but you just touched on something. I think it's pretty interesting there about like, you know, playing with a chip on your shoulder and proving yourself. Could you maybe just tell us a little bit more about that? um, That maybe people wouldn't know about like, you know, the challenges you face. Um, For me personally or for our club? Yeah, No, for Um, you. So for me, I guess I come out of Western Pennsylvania where now it's becoming a bigger city for soccer, but it has not notoriously been a huge soccer hotbed. You, the big soccer hotbeds are the New Yorks, the New Jersey's, California, Texas. Those are where you really see a lot of big players produced. So I got lucky enough to be seen in an ID camp by my college coach at UVA and he took a chance on me and was like, hey, I, I see a lot of potential in you and I want to help you reach that. And in college, it was kind of the same thing. I wasn't the top goal scorer in college by any means. I didn't break any records. I wasn't the highest goal scorer on my team for any of the years that I was there, but I consistently showed up. I was consistent on the field and I was an impact player. And I didn't think that I was going to get drafted. I don't think a lot of people thought I was going to get drafted. Um, I told the story before, but I didn't want to watch the draft because it was freaking me out. My mom putting on the TV in the house and I was like, I can't do this. So I went to the grocery store and just aimlessly walked up and down the grocery stores in Pittsburgh. (laughs) Randomly got a call from a Houston number. and I hadn't even talked to Houston at all. I had, I kind of forgot that Houston was, that there was a team in Houston. I was like, oh, like worst comes to worst, I'll drive up to Washington Spirit and try out for their team and we'll see what happens. Um, And then Houston calls and our coach the first year was Dutch and I barely understood a word she said. She was like, hi, we're gonna draft you in the next 30 seconds, talk to you later. And I was like, (laughs) okay. Very cool. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I was like, okay, cool. Did you think it was a prank call or I was just like, I can't believe that just that I called my college coach and I was like, I think, I think I'm going to get drafted. And he was and like, is, well, that's okay. is there a team in Houston? Yeah. I was like, Oh, it's not the, the dash. Oh, that's cool. I've never been to Texas before, but like, this will be new. Never thought I'd live in Texas, let alone for going on four years. Um, 
but yeah, I was like, okay. And then when I went down to Texas, I don't think a lot of people thought I was going to make the team. I don't think, I mean, the coach pretty much told me at my end of the year meeting that she didn't think I was going to make the team. Um, <laughs> And then I just perform because we had a lot of forwards. We had Kristen Press was supposed to come and all of this stuff. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, we're just going to see how this plays out. And I'm just going to give it my go. I was a third round pick. We Boston had folded that year. We had an influx of players coming in and the rosters had a ton of depth. And I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to make the team, but like, I'm just going to keep trying and running around and hope for the best I mean all I can do is put everything I have out on the field and I did and I made the team and I was like okay well like I think I want to try to be a starter and I pushed for that and I started my first game of the season which was our season opener and I wasn't a consistent starter by any means but I definitely had that mentality of okay I'm here and I'm gonna I'm gonna show them that I can stay here and that I can't not only just stay here but I want to be one of the best here and yeah I was given an environment and teammates that pushed me to be the best that I could possibly be and they're still pushing me I still feel like I haven't reached my ceiling yet um you guys might disagree but we're yeah we're just gonna keep pushing and keep seeing what happens but no I'm Sounds like you're only scratching the surface. I mean, you know, just <laughs> from soccer knowledge and from what you're describing, like it sounds like you're only touching on what you're capable of doing, you know? Yeah. So, so definitely good. excited to see what's to come. Yeah. For, for those who haven't been to Houston, who haven't been to Texas as you weren't, how would you describe things in Texas? I mean, you hear the phrases, everything's bigger in Texas. You see Friday night lights. Um, and, and that's kind of pe- the outsider's uh, perspective of Texas. And what has it been like for you? It's obviously a great soccer community in Houston that really get behind both the Dynamo and the Dash. Uh, so what has that experience been like these past few years? Well, I guess one of the greatest impressions I got from Houston was the Buckies. And I don't know if you guys are aware of Buckies. Or I believe I, I believe actually uh, Haley mentioned it on her episode. So yes, we are we are aware. Now <laughs> we're aware. <laughs> now we're aware. Yes, it's massive. It is a massive gas station, and there is several Buckies that have gourmet foods throughout them. Like I would say, it's comparable to a grocery store size. And wow, like, this is impressive. You guys are coining your own popcorn and deli meats and i'm like i'm so impressed by this establishment um so everything is bigger in texas for sure um it's bigger than wawa i I, i'm a sheets girl wawa is yeah i know Oh, okay yep i grew up with sheets wawa was all the jersey philly people and you know philly just is not the most fun place to be especially in the champions. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Learning a lot of things. Pennsylvania rivalries, uh, yeah. you know, uh, Wawa, Sheets, Bucky's. I've never heard of these places, but I want to go. Yeah, I would definitely seek out the Bucky's. I was, I've gotten some paraphernalia from Bucky's. Haley still wears her Bucky shirt around the apartment. She won't admit it, but she does. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, but I would say Houston has a lot of culture. It has an incredible food scene. It honestly, any type of food that you could possibly want. And I'm obviously I love food. I'm an athlete. I eat all the time. So my life is pretty much working out and finding good places to eat. And so are the majority of my teammates. So it's very fun to explore the food scene in whatever city that we're in. And Houston has a really cool one and just a lot of different cultures. So all the food that you get or the food that you want to seek out, you can get really good authentic, which is pretty incredible. And I'm a big fan. The weather, not a big fan of, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> as a girl who sweats a lot i'm i'm sweating double in houston and it's yeah. it was definitely something it's i rough. had to get to yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what just going back to your career like i mean it, 
it, the more you, you talk about it, the more interesting it seems to be like, just um, like wh- how, you know, the consistency I can see, you know, the, you know, your, what, what was it that drove you to, to want to be a professional player? Um, you know, like, you know, it just seems like that seemed to be like sort of a, li- a guiding force that led you and ke- helped you keep going. You know, it was just, you seem to have a real focus on wanting to become a professional player. Well, I actually wasn't sure if I wanted to go pro after college. I'm so I, I wanted to go to law school and I still want to. I just law school's always gonna be there. So I was between going to law school and going professional. And my last year at UVA, I just felt like I was playing really, really well. And I thought that I wasn't even close to how good I could continue to play. And I was like, I don't want to stop when I don't feel like I've reached my full potential yet. I, I don't want to leave the sport having regrets and thinking what if. And then after my, I was like, okay, well, like, let's give it one year at pro and like, see how that year goes. And the year went fantastic. So I thought I did really well my rookie season. And then I went to Australia and kind of just really felt in a groove down there. Um, in Adelaide and I loved I it made me love the sport even more because I was like I'm having so much fun with this how could I possibly want to stop something that gives me so much genuine intrinsic joy so I was like okay let's just keep going with it and go with your gut and keep pushing it and keep pushing the envelope because at one point you're going to realize what you're capped at and I didn't see that in the foreseeable future. So I figured, hey, I'm just going to keep going with this. And I had the resources and the people around me, and I still do, to make sure that I can reach my potential at one time or at some point in time. So I don't know. That's kind of been my mentality now that I'm not ready to give it up because one, I love it. I love the people I work with and get to play with and obviously live with. And I just love the game still. And I think that I can keep getting better and the people around me are helping me get there. Do you think, do you think if you had grown up in an area that was a little bit more of a soccer hotbed, um, you know, at the time, I guess maybe Pennsylvania from what you're saying is, it seems to me like it's a pretty good hotbed, you know, especially like on the Eastern side, about the Western, but um, do you think if you'd grown up in more of a hotbed, um, you might have uh, realized earlier on exactly what you had in your ability uh, with soccer. I think so. I don't know. I just, I love growing up in Western Pennsylvania because I had coaches that were like, Hey, like we see the potential in this girl and we're going to devote a lot of time to you because we see where you can go and we're going to make sure that you know your value, but also keep me kind of grounded and level-headed like don't get a big head or whatnot and I think if I were in one of those hotbed areas I don't know what my mentality would have been towards the game I don't know if I would have continued to play the game because I loved it or if I would have gotten burnt out I'm, I'm not we sure. see a lot of that I yeah. see a lot of that yeah 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 so, especially on the women's side yeah so it's like I got to play in western Pennsylvania and score hat tricks every game and have so much fun with my teammates and my parents after every game would be like hey are you still having fun playing this sport and I would be like yeah of course I'm having fun and they said okay well the moment you're not you don't have to play anymore Mm -hmm. you don't have to play in college if you don't want to play in college this is entirely up to you like you do this because you love to do it this isn't a job this isn't a chore like we want you to have fun in life. You only have one life to live. And I said, well, yeah, I'm still having fun. And this is great. Like I get to do something I love every day and expend a serious amount of energy because I have way too much energy that coffee is filling and every day. So <laughs> coffee. Yeah. 
awesome. I'm my run yet, so I'm, I'm, that, I'm bouncing off the walls. I don't want to run in the snow either. But yeah. <laughs> no, no, the world is snow. <laughs> I don't know if I, I, I'm not sure if how I would have turned out if I would have been in a hotbed. Who knows? Maybe I would have been ten years ahead of what I am right now, but. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah. it's a, it does sound like a really nice environment, you know, but also sounds like your parents really kind of set the tone for that, for you, you know, where, you know, I, I, I think that's important. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the, uh, the screaming parent or the, uh, you know, like the yeah. intense, sometimes the intense pressure uh, some of the young women feel, um, you know, the brief experience of how I co- like I've coached some, um, college age uh, players, you know, in the summers, like trying to get them a place to play, um, so they can go back, uh, you know, match fit and uh, or close to it. And yeah, I mean, it's you could you, you, you like you feel like oh when you see like the injuries or somebody feel like they're playing because they have to, you know, oh, yeah. especially like a talented player. That definitely goes on the men's side as well. I feel like. So many players that I play with, they do it because it's a chore, and it's not like your genuine love for the game that you have is. Uh, it's very rare. I don't even know if I have that much genuine love for the game. I, I mean, I, I feel, I feel like I'm. I think I, you I, do, I, Jake. I, yeah, maybe she's a little bit more uh, outward about how much she lo- uh, Veronica, how much you love it. But it's, it's great to see, and I, I love players who get so much joy from from playing, from scoring goals, from 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 being around their teammates. Uh, but so for people who maybe haven't seen a dash game, um, how would you describe yourself kind of as a player? And it can kind of go back to high school in or youth soccer in Pennsylvania. It can be towards Virginia. And then obviously now with the dash and how you've progressed through the years. So I guess one of the key components of my game that I don't think has changed throughout my life is my work ethic. Um, because I've always had the mentality that I'm not going to be the fastest player on the field. Like I have speed. It's not like I'm a turtle, but I'm not going to be the fastest and I might not be the most technical. I guarantee I'm probably not the most technical because that's the weakest part of my game. Um, and I might not be the most tactical, but I guarantee you, I will be the hardest working player on that field. And that is what I think every time I step on the field regardless if it's for 90 minutes, if it's for 20 minutes, if it's for five minutes, I know in my bones that if I am not giving absolutely everything I have on that field while I'm there, I will come away from it. Not satisfied. Even if I scored four goals, if I did not try during that game, or there were moments where I felt lazy, I won't be happy. And it's always been that way. And I, it's that way to this day. (laughs) Um, And I think that's part of the reason why Haley and I get along so well is we both kind of have that mentality of there are a lot of uncontrollables in soccer. And one of the things that you can always control is how hard you try and how much work you're willing to put into whatever part of the game that you're involved with. So I think if you see me on the field, you're like, wow, she has not stopped trying. Even though she turned the ball over 10 times, she is still running to get it back. And I don't know why people keep passing it to her, but she's still trying to get it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the way that I've always played the game. And I kind of like to throw myself 100% in whatever I'm doing. So it's the way I play the game. It's the way I play my life because that's clearly a game too. But um. Yeah, I, that's probably one of the biggest things that you'll see out of my game is that. Yeah, I think you might be selling yourself a little short with the technical part of the game. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, you make a lot of good runs kind of in behind defenses or with the balls coming in, like kind of across, like smart striker runs, uh, which I can appreciate as a striker. And it, <laughs> it goes unnoticed probably a lot of the times uh, just because people don't put the ball where – where you want it to go. Uh, but I, I think that's a huge part of the game. And I think Dave, I think the Irish would love her. Uh, with the, yeah. I was the thinking she, that actually <laughs> she was talking. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Irish would love her game and they'd appreciate her game. That's for sure. Oh, that's good. I am very Irish. So maybe that's <laughs> any, any potential of playing uh, for the Irish national team there. Any, any grandparents or 
unfortunately, my grandparents are not straight from Ireland, but they yeah. only married Irish people for like generations. My mom was the first to stop. I, so. I think they'll find a way to slip yeah. you in anyway if they could figure that out, knowing the Irish. Like they did that with Jake. So, like, you know, like, <laughs> not for national team, but like, you know, his first year in Galway, they just kind of slipped him in the country and kept them. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was there on a, a holiday visa for the whole season, even on a like I, I, I obviously was supposed to get a work permit and they just ne- they were just like, no, nah, you're fine. And somehow it was allowed. It was very illegal. Like, but you it, cash under the table. No, no, no. It was like salaried. It was going into a bank account. It was my American bank account because I couldn't get an Irish bank account because I didn't have a work permit. But it went straight into my American bank account and very illegal um, immigration. Oh. Will uh, be if they, the good thing we don't have too many listeners or immigration will come yeah. uh, arrest me. Uh, yeah, he <laughs> might not be allowed back into Ireland, but <laughs> it's okay. You're in Peru right now. I don't know where the beer is. <laughs> you're good. Well, per- Peru was actually last year. <laughs> but like your background, no one knows. Don't say oh yes, yes, yeah. that's, that's true. That's true. Um, I, I'm, 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 yeah. It, it looks very believable as long as I don't make too many fast movements, huh? Yep. <laughs> But Ver- Veronica in Ireland would be like a mega star times ten. Like you'd be huge. The 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 women's soccer over there. I mean, it's definitely not anywhere near the level, uh, you know, of other countries. But it it's still it's not a bad level. Like I mean, actually, Stephanie Roach uh, plays there, and she played with you, your your club. I don't know. You probably weren't there when she was with the Dash, but yeah. you know, like um, you know, but like. Uh, they love Jake and they love that hardworking, hard running player, that style. It's very like, you know, Irish. Yeah. UK, you know, so they you would be like, you know, rock star, you know. They chanted USA at the games for Jake. Like Oh my know. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. They still want him back too. <laughs> You know, the <laughs> country is like, hey, no, you are not going to bypass our immigration this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was I was allowed back in for two seasons after the first one, so I think I've uh, well, on legal legally though, legally though, the second oh, two good. times. So uh, it it all worked out well. Uh, my agent mm-hmm. Dave did well. Yeah, yeah, advocate, advocate. So oh, sorry, advocate. Yeah, we'll 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 take care of you, Veronica. Whenever whenever you want to go to Ireland. Um, so can you talk. One thing I wanted to we touched on Houston, but what I wanted to touch on with Houston was um, for the city was the reaction to, and we kind of touched on this with Haley a bit too, but uh, just the reaction to you as a Houston Nash player and the love and the support that you you received from the fans and just you know. Uh, it just seems like, again, it just seems like it's a really cool soccer city that it, I don't know if the rest of the country is fully aware of. No, I mean, I feel a lot of love from the fans in terms of like everything they do on social media will get tagged on in a, a lot of random things. And it kind of just makes you feel extra loved. You're like, oh, wow, like you guys really care about us. And when we did our new logo release, uh, they reached out and they were like oh like you guys are going to be signing autographs at the new logo release at the team store well yeah we want to come with time and the majority of the people that showed up at the team store were dash fans and they they, our media people were like oh like how did you guys hear about this why'd you guys come out and they'd be like oh like veronica's instagram said that she was going to be here at this time and to come see the team store and check out the new logo stuff and like we want with like we haven't seen the players because we couldn't go to the game so we wanted to see and support you guys and same thing when Haley did it and when Megan Oyster did it and the other girls that did the the logo release appearances so many Dash fans would show up and people were like wow this is incredible that they're so receptive to one your guys social media and two just being a Dash fan and supporting the club it's it makes you feel like you are important and important and that you're an actual professional athlete, which at times I feel like there are moments where we don't necessarily feel like a professional athlete. And those are the times that make up for it. And you're like, wow, 
this made me feel special and I hope they realize that their random tweet being like happy birthday Veronica you're one of my favorite players like yeah that makes me feel really good inside and just happy that I can touch people's lives like that have you been on the Glenn Davis show I have Yes. Yeah, I love that podcast. I love Glenn Davis. Mm-hmm. No. I mean, there's nobody else I don't I could that I know of that's like that with any of the MLS or the uh, or the NWSL clubs. Like you know, where he supports the Dynamo the Dash. He's the commentator, and like I think he's been around for a long time. Like yeah. you know, he's but I, you know, like I, I just think that's one thing about Houston. Uh, Houston soccer that's so cool is like it's bringing like a very professional level to the club you know and and for you guys to go on a show you know that's I mean I think he's also like a very knowledgeable commentator where yes so many so much of our media here with the soccer is just personally I just find them all like really frustrating but that's just my own like the Grant Walls and all those people that like think they know about the game whereas Glenn Davis actually does. <laughs> you know? We're calling people out now, huh, Dave? I know. We're named. Well, I've already. <laughs> so are we gonna bleep right? this out in the final? <laughs> no, no. There's, there's no, there's no editing. I've been, oh. I've been going on about Grant Wall for all for ages, so you know, it's nothing new. I'm hoping he blocks me. I, I wouldn't even follow him on Instagram or social media or Twitter. <laughs> block me. Um, <laughs> so, so, Veronica, one thing that we've discussed on a lot of the other women's players uh, shows that we've done and it's, and with younger leagues, like, I mean, the USL, like that I play in the NWSL, like you guys are playing in um, there's a huge emphasis on connecting with the player's story versus like when you're in the premier league and you play for man United, they just, or their fans are just supporting you for your ability on the field. And that's it. Like they, that's it They're They've been, the family has been in, as you know, been United fans for generations. So, or whoever you may support, uh, but, how much Liverpool. of an emphasis? Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, there you go. <laughs> well, the Irish always support the Irish always support Liverpool. It's like a it's the unofficial Irish club. Um, but how much of an emphasis day to day do you put on trying to connect with the fans and trying to bring new, not necessarily people that already reach out on Twitter or Instagram? How many? How much do you put on in trying to get new fans into the stadium? I mean, that would be more of our outreach. So I really love being involved with um, any kind of external relations that the Dash set up with. Um, So whether that be us connecting with schools, I really love working with kids. I think that soccer bring, or any kind of team sports really bring a lot to the table. And I think that having women in high power roles on, in the professional sports field is huge. And I think, having those role models for young women is incredible because I mean, I still remember Mia Hamm and I was like, wow, like she's awesome. And she did it. Like I want to do it. And to have us be face to face and to have us right there is incredible. It makes it seem more of a reality. And I think that would be where I would want to reach out and try to broaden our fan base more is it's kids and young women and uh, young men too because you think about it when you're in middle school and in high school I at least was rooting for the Steelers and I was rooting for the Penguins and would go to all their games and ask my parents and beg my parents for Pens tickets and Steelers tickets and Pirates tickets so why wouldn't we want to reach out to the kids that are very much prevalent in Houston and be like, hey, mom and dad, like, let's go to a Dash and Dynamo game because they are very cost effective or cost friendly, I guess. Um, they're not very expensive and they're right in the heart of the city. So around a lot of things that you can do and it's easy access to go and see women play in the highest level possible. So I think it's an untapped market that we're really trying to reach out to and it provides one us with a larger fan base and two it provides kids with the role models that they need in life and hopefully influences them to join in on any kind of team sport because the 
skills and values you learn playing in a team sport is unparalleled in my opinion I think that there's so much that you can gain from it even if you're the worst player on the team I certainly wasn't very good at softball which is why I'm not doing it now but <laughs> I love all the players I've been on my softball team so <laughs> hey it, it matters <laughs> it so at the end of the day that's who I would want to reach out to and make the greatest impact is at least the kids in Houston and I mean honestly you can reach out in other city markets as well hopefully some Pittsburgh people are listening to this and those kids are like yeah now we're Dash fans Mm. that's the end game Mm. (laughs) can you touch a little bit about another great adventure in in this life you're having there where it seems like a lot of great adventures with soccer and playing you know cities and things but Australia let's touch on Australia because you played there quite a bit and besides uh, you know smoking uh, yeah, Haley's team and you know uh, putting them to shame what other major uh, accomplishments and, and fun times have you had playing in Australia there oh I've had so much fun times I got to hold on a koala bear my first year five times I feel like that's like a pretty big accomplishment that I should <laughs> know about what stopped it from being number six I had to go home <laughs> okay, 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 gotcha. There's only so many times you can go to a conservation park, and then they're like, "It's the American again. It's the same one." <laughs> I'm back. Give me lofty. Um, <laughs> the same. um <laughs> but I honestly, Australia was where I went and learned to be confident as a forward again, and it just, you get to have so much fun and score so many goals and just be in a beautiful environment. So you get to train early in the morning and then you have the entire day to go explore the cities. And Adelaide was really cool. It was like a nice little beach town and I loved it. We were super close to the beaches and I obviously played very well down there. Um, I got player of the month for December and I was loving my life it was such a great time and again it was more of an underdog team which I liked um not saying I don't like to be on a winning team I certainly like to be on a winning team but I like to be on a team that is underestimated because I can relate to that so that's kind of how we were and we got the club the closest to reaching the playoffs in club history we I think if we had won one more game we would have made the playoffs which was pretty big for Adelaide because the year prior they were the wooden spoon people contenders. Is that what it's last called? Last place. Last place. Yeah. 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 They spoon, kept yeah. referring to like the wooden spoon. And I was like, I've never heard this, but, <laughs> um, but that in itself had a wonderful experience there. And then Sydney, my next year was also wonderful. I got to play in a grand final, which was something I hadn't done since my, or professionally I've never done it and I hadn't been to a championship game since college so that was incredible and Sydney is hands down one of my favorite cities in the world I think everybody should go and visit it's amazing it has everything you could possibly want beaches on a cliff and mountains that you can climb in and not as many koalas but (laughs) it's okay it made up for it with its beauty um but yeah, Sydney was an incredible experience. And again, you just get to play with really high caliber players. Like I played with four Australian women's national team players on my Sydney team. And I got to play with Sophia, who was on the US team. And Shalina Zadorsky came over and trained with us for a month. So she was on the Canadian, she is on the Canadian national team. And it's just a really great group of people that you get to train with and play with every day and against and I had a fantastic time so we we heard the story from Haley's perspective (laughs) whoa that was something uh we heard the story from Haley's perspective that's a low battery technical difficulties for for anybody who's uh who doesn't know that's a low battery on the phone I'm I'm have headphones but with the new iPhones they don't let you charge and have a headphone in at the same time so that's it's a big problem um but anyway uh so we heard the story from Haley's perspective her losing against you with you scoring the winning goal and you coming up to her after the game being like hey what's up you want to get coffee or whatever you said I was um, so <laughs> yeah I was like is it okay if I come and say hi and she was like 
yeah. And then she hugged me and I was like, we're fine. We never even played against each other on the field. I'm like, what? It's like, uh, oh, be salty just because we won. <laughs> Uh, that's funny but, but playing abroad is, is such a great experience and, and and something that everyone should experience as a male or female and i think it's a great part of the women's game that you guys are able to go over there during your off seasons as like and just a way to get additional games um yeah and it's it's pretty it's pretty cool i mean to go from winter in new york to, to beautiful sydney or winter in your case in pennsylvania to beautiful sydney is something i'm very envious of Yep, it was pretty great. I had summer year round for two years. So this is my first winter in a while. And I was like, wow, what is this white stuff on the ground? That's weird. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you know, obviously, uh, you know, I, I, we touched on before Houston. I mean, I really think like you, you have such a good situation there. And, and uh, but, you know, as we touched on with Haley too, like if, if there was an opportunity to go play in Europe, um, you know, at a really high level, with a really big club, um, is that something you would consider or is it something that, you know, I'm just really happy with the way things are and, you know, family, friends, you know, I want to have my life the way it is and, you know, might be a great opportunity, but I don't think I really want to, Europe wouldn't really be for me. Like what, you know, which way do you lean on that? I don't know. I mean, I love Houston. I honestly, ever since I tore my ACL, I try not to think too far into the future because before I tore it, I kind of was. And I was like, oh, well, like my life could be here, here, here. Like, I, depending on how the season goes, like, who knows where I may be in this world. And then my world kind of came crashing down. And my feet were cut out from underneath me and I had to learn how to walk again. So I guess for me, the best way for my mental state is to be fully present in the moment and whatever I'm doing and find how I can be grateful for whatever's going on in my life at this current time. So I try not to have one foot in the future or look too far ahead in the future and try to plan that out. Um, but I also am not closing myself off to options. I love, I love Houston, but if some opportunity were to arise somewhere in this world at some point in time, I can't say now that I'd be like, absolutely not. I mean, for next year, absolutely not, because I'm going to be in Houston. Um, but I do always like to keep my options open because I think that it's just part of having an open mind. And I think when you start closing options and doors, that's when you can start pinning yourself into a corner. And I think that kind of just breeds anxiety because you're like, oh, I only have this one choice. And what if, it, what if it doesn't work out? And I think the best way to have some kind of mental well being is kind of being like, okay, well, like whatever happens happens and we're going to go with the flow and if it works out great I'm going to do everything I can to help make it work out but at the end of the day what's meant to be will be so I'm kind of just playing it by ear right now year to year I, it makes a lot of sense yeah I think whatever you do wherever you'll go you'll be successful just because of your, your desire, your, your hard work and all that. Uh, my final question to you is, have you ever seen the show shoot suits? I have, I've seen like the first three seasons of it. Okay. So in your future, when you're a lawyer, uh, hopefully whatever, 10 years down the road, after you have a long NWSL national team career and all that, uh, what kind of lawyer would you be? Like if, if you had to pick someone from suits, who would you be? Oh, see, I don't, I, I don't want to do corporate law. That's my thing. Okay. So I like that. Do I want that lifestyle and their clothes and their <laughs> apartments and all the bouginess? Absolutely. That sounds amazing. <laughs> but unfortunately, the law that I want to practice might not set me up in the most uh, monetary outlook. Um, what kind of law? I'm looking more into humanitarian rights and constitutional okay. law. So okay. it's 
great cause, but I don't think I'm going to be wearing Louboutins while I'm doing my work in law. <laughs> but if I could be anybody, it'd be Meghan Markle. She's beautiful and smart in that show. I was like, obviously, great. who yeah. wouldn't want to be Meghan Markle? <laughs> oh, right. But yeah. I mean, Donna's Donna's not a lawyer, but she's pretty badass, and she's got also true. She's got some flair to her as well. Yes, yes, the red hair really the red hair as well. Yeah. So. One thing I, want, I wanted to touch on before we wrap up, we kind of just, we touched on it a bit, was UVA. So maybe if you could just tell us a little bit about UVA and, and your experiences there and, and how that's um, impacted your career, you know, up to date now going forward. So yeah, my career at UVA was incredible. Um, Steve Swanson, the head coach, is one of the best coaches, I think, in this entire world. I think that he recruits players based off of their potential and then wants to develop them. It's not a, oh, like she's good and she's good now. So I'm going to play her and start her 90 minutes her first year. And then she's never going to get any better. Like we're just going to ride off of that talent. No, he will take, he would work with me after practice or before training 45 minutes to an hour, at least four days a week. And I wasn't the only person that was doing these individuals. It, he would be out there before our individuals, after our individuals, working with other players as well. And I think that just kind of shows the players that come out of UVA that they were built, they have a great foundation, both tactically and technically, and they're set up well to become a professional soccer player. Because you have the Morgan Bryans, Emily Sonnets, Mackenzie Doniak, Danny Colaprico, oh, uh, I can Kristen McNabb, Brittany Ratcliffe. There are so many players that are in this league that weren't necessarily all standouts in college, but they got to this league and they're here still and they're playing very well. And everyone's like, oh, that's curious. They just kind of fit into the prof professional realm so wonderfully. And it's like it comes from somewhere and it's Steve Swanson. Yeah. He creates a culture of always wanting to be better and to grow and to develop. And it's incredible. You get inspired by the older players that are out there on the field, trying to get better before and after training. And then you are one day, one of those older players out there on the field, inspiring the rookies and the first and second years. Um, so it's, it was an incredible program. And I am so grateful that I went there. I can't imagine going to a better place. I think it's something that, you touch on that's very interesting is a lot of players go to college and they want to play 90 minutes as a freshman from day one and you 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 were able to play I think every game your freshman year most every game but you didn't start any and you yeah. always came off the bench and it was but it was for a very successful team a team that lost and ended up losing in the national final um, so that's something that I think when girls or boys when they're going through that college recruiting process I think that first year if you're able to get some time I think it's important to play a little bit yeah. Um, in some respect, but I think it, it's, it's definitely a path where you can learn a lot versus if you go to a slightly smaller school, that's not as good, but you'll play right away. Um, that's not always the best because you don't necessarily learn that winning culture that you don't have to work as hard for what you earn. Um, so it's definitely something that your story can help kind of the, the people who are listening maybe, and maybe follow that and, it, and to, to be patient. I think patience is yeah. something in, in, in life, but also in soccer, that's, it's very important. Yeah. By no means was I, a, I was only starting a handful of games my second year as well. It was a gradual development process and I put in the work and had other people invest in me too, because they saw the potential. And I think that's a great point that it does take a lot of patience and I definitely learned that. And it helped me for the professional world too. I think also before we leave, we got to get in. We ha we got to get at least one good hashtag roommate story from you <laughs> from the Veronica perspective. Oh, I'm trying to think. Um, hmm, hashtag roommate story. Hmm. There are like several good ones. I don't know. The one that I was talking, I told you guys about, we were on the podcast and I was talking about her leaving for Kansas City. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
well, before that, I, it was like when we were going after the challenge cup, I was in Pittsburgh and I had to drive my dog back to Houston. I was like, oh, okay, well, like I'll stop in Kansas city and I'll pick up Haley and Finn. And then we'll all just drive back down to Houston. And so I drove an extra like three hours out of my way out of the like tw- the trip from Pittsburgh to Houston was like 21 hours. I drove 24 or 25 total so that I could go to Kansas city, stay there for the night and like see my roommate a day early. The roommate that I was going to see for the next six months, every single day. <laughs> and I was like, it's fine. I'll just drive the extra three hours. And then we could both just be in the car for 11 hours again, because why do we need to be away from each other? And um, yeah, it was great. I stayed the night and then we woke up early the next morning and drove down to Houston. We were like, we're psychos. We are psychos. We need to get away from each other. Every And like every day in quarantine, when we were back in March, people are, people talk about, not as if we were dating, but like people will talk about like, oh, like quarantine breakups. Like, yeah, quarantine this like really killed relationships. I thought that our friendship could not be any stronger. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> We are just hanging out all day long. We bought matching pajamas so that we wake up in the morning, <laughs> come out of our rooms, go get our coffee. We would sit down at our table and drink coffee for four hours in our PJs. And we would look at the time and be like, shoot, it's it's noon and we haven't done anything. We've just drank like two pots of coffee. But yeah, no, that was, that's quarantine. I don't know. This, that's a couple of stories thrown into you. It's like little mini stories it's not like one big one where it's like oh like v almost died like no nothing that tragic happens just just like a lot of like small stories that are built up and you're like how are you guys still wanting to hang out with each other it's like i don't know (laughs) what would you do if the dash came to you next year and we're like listen Haley, veronica we need you guys to not be roommates anymore would you be devastated it would be so sad. We asked <laughs> <laughs> the bubble. They were like, hey, we're trying to be COVID safe and like professional. Everybody for that month that you're in the bubble gets their own hotel room. And like, you guys will all get your own hotel room. Like, it'll be really professional. And we texted our manager. And we were like, do we have to get our own hotel room? Like, can we have a connection? <laughs> like she's so far away (laughs) and so it's not okay (laughs) like granted at the end of the day I'm glad I had my own hotel room because a month in a hotel sucks but yeah I was kind of just like oh my gosh this is this is sad I'm not gonna see my roommate as soon as I open my bedroom door but we were put next to each other in the hall (laughs) so it's fine yep plenty plenty of time to visit (laughs) yes Mm mm-hmm (laughs) <laughs> I think we're definitely going to have to do like a 2021 check-in on the roommates. We'll do one with both of you. Yes. Together both on at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have to continue this saga of uh, the dashing roommates. I think this is definitely becoming a YouTube series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we're providing some uh, COVID content. It's good. <laughs> Well, uh, hopefully thank the you Dash so much, fans are this and... Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, uh, this is great. Uh, and I hope you have a great holiday season and definitely looking forward to having you and, and Haley on together, uh, you know, sometime in the new year and, you know, get an update. Yes. <laughs> well, be sure to provide you with some new content. I'm sure 2020 will bring plenty of fun times. We'll see. <laughs> all right thank you so much Great. well thank you so much Very good. until next time dave i'm the athlete i'm the advocate and we are the aristocrats the aristocrats <laughs> <laughs>